Hey everyone, Steve Harris here. As promised, here's a video on styling some of the elements within your Equid store using custom CSS. Now a little bit of a warning at first or up front here is this video will use some code, so we've got to do some CSS to, to make this happen. However, you can get away with copying and pasting a lot of it by using the developer tools within the browser. Now, if you've never worked with developer tools, I'll show you a quick overview of it in this video, but it's really powerful for kind of taking our widgets to a higher level or pushing them outside of their boundaries. Sometimes when we build a widget, we can't build everything we want to into that small flyout panel. So using this method, you can override various elements of our widgets just using embedded CSS. So the first thing we'll do here is let's just look at Equid. So we're on the Equid dashboard and if you looked at the system settings and there's a design tab, it says you can input a custom CSS theme. So it gives you the base theme here on the bottom and it's really long, really long and intimidating. So we're probably not going to go through and remake every little bit of this theme using the CSS. I find that pretty difficult to do. So what you'd wanna do is just pick and choose certain elements to style. Now the interesting thing about this is you don't even need to do this on the Equid side of things. And the reason for that is because if you actually put your styles right in Muse, just due to the way that CSS cascades, um, those Muse styles will be the, you know, the most prominent or the active ones on your site. So forget for now about this Equid custom CSS themes component and let's just jump into Muse. And the first thing I'll do is drag out an Equid widget onto the site. So we drag it out here. It previews in the browser, or we'll preview it in the browser and see how it looks. Okay, so once our Equid store previews, you can see that this is just kind of the default look that we have to our store. Now, what you'd wanna do in this case is use the developer tools in the browser. So I use Firefox. You might wanna download Firefox so you can kind of mimic what I'm doing in this video, but almost every browser out there has a development console. So for Firefox, if you click Tools, and web developer and then there's a toggle tool so we'll just click that so on my browser it comes up on the side here it may come up on the bottom of yours if you've never gone into it which looks like this but there's just a little button on this toolbar that says dock to side of browser i find it a little bit easier to look at it on the side of the browser instead so what this allows you to do it looks really intimidating but for the most part you're only going to use a couple of tools within it is when you mouse over various elements in the code, it actually highlights it on the page for you. So developer tools is meant for you to be able to dig in and inspect and find out what's controlling various things. So let's go ahead first and click on this button that says pick an element from the page. This is the inspector. So if we select that, and then let's say we pick this text here, it says span.equid categories category. So if we click on that, what it does is it pulls up this various CSS below here that's showing you um, what's being controlled. So we've got the font family, it's set to open sans, we've got font weight, and we've got the line height. Uh, there's also a tab here for fonts. So the great thing about this is if you're on a website and you love the font, you can use developer tools to see what font they're using. I do it all the time, and that's actually how I find many of the best fonts that I like. So if we go into the rules part, you can see that it says font family open sans. Well, maybe we want to change this font to Arial. The amazing thing about developer tools is you can actually test it out by just double clicking into this area and let's just put Arial in there, just like that. And so you can see that it actually changed automatically on the site. Now you're probably wondering, well, how can you do this? Because you don't own this site, it's not on your server. The thing is you're not actually changing it for everyone. You're not changing anything on their server. All you're doing is manipulating your in-browser preview of it. So if I was to refresh this page, all of these modifications I made are going to disappear completely. So the great thing about this though, is you can use the browser as almost your style editor. So we've got font weight. Let's say we wanna do, instead of a numbered weight, let's just do bold. So you can see it changes to bold. Now we've got line height. Line height controls the kind of spacing. It's almost like the letting in InDesign or Muse. So let's set that to, let's go two. So what it's doing is just adding a little more space. Now that's not a drastic change because there's probably something else controlling the stuff below. But for now, let's just leave that at two and say, okay, we're happy. So if we're happy with all of these changes we've made, what we can do is we can actually 
kind of drop this block into Muse and make sure that Muse uses it to style the store. So the way that we're going to do this is let's copy this entire block here. So basically from usually it's a style up here at the top all the way down to this closing bracket and it's going to grab everything in the middle. And let's just click copy. Now let's go into Muse and on the page that we have our widget, let's go object and insert HTML. Okay. Once we've done that, we can actually just paste that code in here. Now the only problem with this is this code needs to be wrapped in what's called a style tag. So the style tag is really easy. It's just an open bracket and it says style and then we need to put one at the bottom too. So it's an open bracket and then we have a forward slash and style there. So all of the code we're going to paste in for overriding any of these elements is just going to live between these two styles. And you can have a whole bunch of breaks or spaces in there, it's not going to affect anything. Okay, so once we've done that, let's just click OK. You're probably not going to see any changes in the design view in Muse, but what will happen is when we preview this in the browser, it will change. So because I've only made these edits in developer tools, if I refresh this page, you'll see that they're all gone once I do. Now let's just close that for a second and let's go ahead and preview the page again from Muse and remembering that we've added this little insert HTML block. And when we preview that, and it loads, you can see that we now have Arial Bold as the font. So what's happening is Equid's kind of delivering the widget and Muse is saying, hey, I see that you're using this style. Instead of what you're told to use on the Equid backend, I want you to use this font and this size and that sort of thing. So that's how you can go ahead and kind of begin really styling up these stores directly in Muse. So let's go ahead and select something else. Um, Let's go, let's see if we can change that add to bag color. That almost looks like an image, which unfortunately can be a little bit more tricky to change, but, or let's see if we can change the background color even on this block. So let's do the same thing. We can actually jump into developer tools really quickly by right clicking and going inspect element. And then it already loads up the uh, inspector tool here. So let's just select this box, okay. And so when I selected that, you can see that if we just kind of glance at the CSS down here, we've got some sizing controls, it looks like for the box, but below this, it says background color. And you can see that that's the gray that's being used. So the great thing again about these developer tools is you can click on that and you get a color browser and I can just drag it and change it to whatever I want. So if we wanted this to be some sort of branded blue like that, we could just do that just like this. Um, let's select, let's just even make it a darker gray, for example. Okay, so let's say we're happy with that. It looks good. Now let's just select that block again, jump into Muse. We're gonna edit the HTML that we've dropped in and let's just place this down below there. So each of these lines has to have this opening bracket and this closing bracket or parentheses rather, and just make sure that they're all closed as you go. So, okay, we're happy with that. Now let's say we don't like the look of this text on there. We might want to change this from red. So we selected it. You can see that down here it says the color is red. No, we want that to be white. Let's just drag it to white. And again, same thing. Let's copy and paste the whole block. We'll go into Muse and I'll paste that one down below. So as you can see, you're not really writing any code. You're really just copying and pasting it in. And let's click OK. And let's go ahead and preview this in the browser now to see how it looks. Okay, so as you can see, of course, our fonts are still using Arial up there. If we click on a product, let's go to the, one of these shirts. You can see that the background now on this box is a darker gray, and of course our price is in white. So it's a really, really great way for you to edit up your store without um, you know, having to do a ton of manual coding yourself. And actually the great thing about developer tools too, in terms of creating these um, styles is let's click on, again, something like this price here. And maybe that's not a great example. We'll pick something a little bit more simple. Let's just select this block. So of course we've got our font. We could change the font size. Let's change that to 24 or, you know, it could be something drastic like 80. See, that's huge, but it doesn't matter. And then we want a different color. Let's change that to blue. But let's say we wanted to add a totally different 
element to this or we wanted to add a whole new rule. So let's say we wanted some space below this I goods. You don't always just need to change what's in there. You can select the last one and hit enter and create a new one. So in CSS, if you wanted to add some space below an element, you might add some padding. So let's just try padding bottom and then you need to put a colon and then you put in your mount. So let's go something crazy, 30 pixels. There, well, that's not really that crazy, but you can see it added 30 pixels in there below that element. So we could do something drastic like 100 pixels, but this is the way that you're gonna go through and just you need to work through inspecting elements and styling them up as you need. And then of course, same exact thing, let's uh, select it all and we'll go back into views, go into our edit HTML block here and we'll paste it. So one thing I should point out is that if we don't change something, like for example, this word wrap, break word, that's how it was initially in the site and it's not, uh, we're not changing it ourselves, you probably don't need to copy that in Muse. There's no point. I would say delete out anything that you haven't modified. So this one, you know, we didn't change that white space. Um, there, that looks pretty good. So we'll click okay. And again, if we preview in the browser, this will all look uh, as you selected in developer tools. So. That's a quick overview of how to style the site. I know it's a little code heavy, especially if you're a Muse user, but you know what, I'm not a developer myself. I've just spent some time working with CSS and playing around with these things. And another thing that's really cool about this is this applies to more than just the Equid widget. I mean, if we pull up the library here and let's select, for example, our MP3 audio player widget. Okay. so. We've got some controls on the widget for you know setting up like the player color, the player bar color, that sort of thing. But all those controls are doing is basically the same thing that we just did in the browser. It's just modifying the CSS. So let's preview this in the browser. And you can see how it looks. We'll go into the inspector or the developer tools. Let's select you know this text here. I don't think we gave you the ability to change uh, the text style of the timing on this widget so it's a zero 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 and let's just let me confirm that and use so if we click on the fly out here nope you don't have the ability to change that font so if we go into the browser and you can see if we scroll down in our CSS let's look for a font okay we have one here font family it's Helvetica so let's just change that to I don't know let's go with open sans okay so it looks like it changed in there I can't really tell if that's open sans maybe that's not a great example let's go with um, even just times, yeah, I can't tell. I can't tell if that's changed. We need to be a little more particular about uh, what we're doing. But again, same thing. Copy the whole, the whole class in there like that. Jump into Muse. You can actually just paste it in. And oops, not like that. We go Object Insert HTML. Paste it in there. Wrap it in those style tags just to make sure it works. Just like that, and just like that. Okay. You know what, let's change this to Montserrat. That's always what I use for demos. And let's change the font size to something huge, like 15. Now, because we're styling this in Muse and not in the browser, we're not gonna be able to see what happens here before this loads up. So it might be crazy, but who knows? No, it doesn't look crazy. It looks really good actually at that size. And I can definitely tell that that is the, the font uh, Montserrat. So you can see it works really well. And it's a way for you to push all of our widgets or kind of hack all of our widgets to take them to a new level. So I think this video is getting a little bit long and you've probably been overwhelmed by code. So perhaps I'll break this up into something smaller later down the road if you have more questions. But that's a good start on how to take our widgets to the next level. Thanks again and let us know if you have any questions. Cheers.